Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back Chat. We've been doing this for six months. Six That's months. Incredible. That is... Back in the day, Maggie didn't even join me no. in the Kickstarter series. Now she's been here representing yeah. for six months. Now I know. Now I'm up to date. <laughs> now I don't find out what games we backed when they arrive in the mail two That's years right. later. No, I... you're, yeah. you're, um, what I've, is the word? I've joined in the FOMO now. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, well, not FOMO, you're an but accomplice. in the... In the uh, in their long, long wait for delivery of mm-hmm. a lot of Kickstarter, Which yeah. means I can't feel bad about the money that we're collectively spending together. <laughs> yes. No more shock and surprises. No. Nope. Yes. So if you're new to Backchat, um, that made no sense. Yeah. But I'm Amy and this is my partner Maggie. And in this series, we rank our top 10 Kickstarter campaigns every fortnight uh, for the ones that have launched during that fortnight. And the ranking is entirely based on our very subjective opinions of what we're excited about. Yeah. So, yeah. We're excited about playing, not at all representative of how good we think the game might be. The game might be terrible, well, sometimes but we're we just might really think excited. It might be good. Yeah, Could be yeah both. sometimes we might think it's going to be amazing both. and it's going to be terrible. So th- it's, this is not, we haven't played a lot of these games. A couple we have this particular fortnight, but we'll talk about them when we get to them. But uh, yeah, usually it's just how much we're anticipating getting them on the table. That's yeah. right. So speaking of anticipation, let's get to it. Our number 10 of the week. Number 10 is Potato Pirates 3 Battle Chips. <laughs> I don't know if I... English is a second language. Often my chips and ships and... No, chips is good. Yeah, Battle good. Chips. Mm-hmm. So in this game, we all play potatoes because, you know, why not? And uh, potatoes we're going to be... and coding. Going yeah, hand and so we're, hand. we're going to be potatoes and we're going to be fighting other potatoes, which are the other players. And we're going to be doing it with uh, coding principles. So mm-hmm. like computer and this particular one includes like some concepts around cybersecurity. So it's uh, educational as well. It is. And so this is from the team that had another potato themed game called Spudnet, which was also coding related and successfully uh, fulfilled that Kickstarter. Uh, for us, this game has kind of just scraped into yeah. our top 10 we both gave it a five it's probably not something that we're going to be backing but we did want to feature it because it is an educational game or let's say it's, it's there's a lot of take that in this game yeah, um, it does seem like quite a brutal game experience mm-hmm. um, yeah. but the the uh, terminology that's used or the way that the linkage between what things are called and my mm-hmm. understanding of how they work in like programming, mm-hmm. computer programming yeah. is very uh, well interlinked. And so it could be used as an educational tool. But that mm-hmm. is our number 10, yeah. Potato Pirates 3 Battle Chips. Our number nine is, um, well, it's a set of games and it's yeah. the big game night set from AEG. Now, AEG usually have this big game night as part of um, some different cons uh, around America, I believe, such as Gen Con, which we were meant to be going to (laughs) again. And our tickets have been pushed out to next year again, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll get there eventually. Um, But they normally put it out. They normally showcase a lot of their Mm. new games. And instead of doing that just at cons this time, what they've done is they've made it available to to you all or us all on Kickstarter. Um, Us. But yeah, I said us, but Mm. actually no Australians. So to all of our Australian viewers, sorry, this is a US... Um, only yeah. um, offer, but what they're doing is putting. I think there's there's three games, isn't there? There's um, mm-hmm. ten, which is a new game that looks set quite abstract mm-hmm. because it's very numbers based and sequence based. Um, but it's by the same team um, who did um, Point Salad. Point Salad, thank yeah. you. And um, so you know we really like Point Salad. It's mm-hmm. a quick, fast game, and this one's meant to be similar to that. Yeah. Then there's Whirling Witchcraft, which is seems like a drafting game where you're passing these little cauldrons around, yeah. which full is of ingredients. Yeah, you're full to of ingredients. Overwhelm the next uh, player with, with too, too many, many ingredients, ingredients but yeah. then at the same time, I mean, that's going to be happening to you. So it's just a fun roundabout sort of. Which uh, that one looked a little simple for us, yeah. I thought. Um, but then the third thing was also they have. Three thrown in the tiny towns expansion um villages i think it's called and um we actually don't own tiny towns Mm. but um i know a lot of people love that game and so and for 40 dollars you can get all of that delivered to you which i think is a really great deal i'm just super bummed that it's not available us only to australians um and for that reason it's lower for us we both gave it a six it's our number nine big game night by aeg yeah 
And number eight, right, number eight is a little game called Winter Haven Woods. And this game is just visually so beautiful. It is gorgeous. So it is a winter, uh, winter woodland and you have all these different creatures and the sort of forest scenery and you're going to be trying to uh, creating little, create the best little uh, woodland essentially with the different, um, yeah, the critters that you have. You're also going to be able to use predators to uh, hunt some of the critters that other players may leave um vulnerable let's say and uh, but the but for me the main thing about this is it just looks so beautiful and i just want like every single one of those cards as prints on my walls yeah i, I really liked how you're drafting the forest mm-hmm. and then the and that provides the um environment for your creatures yeah. that you're yeah, also yeah. yeah that was really cute i thought because yeah. you end up creating this like landscape mm-hmm. of um trees and animals yeah. yeah the artwork is beautiful and actually as part of the campaign you can pick up the print yes if you so desire um for us probably we might wait and see if it gets to retail it's just you know it's hard to justify backing smaller games yeah. sometimes with the postage to australia and it might be a bit light i think in it terms could of be a bit light play yeah it's like yeah sometimes it's hard to tell because sometimes something might look very light and then you play it and you're like oh wow super thinky like super yeah. thinky or yeah 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 but it definitely is one that we would like to try out um yeah we both gave it a six that is winter haven woods the next game, number, number seven. seven. It's a little game called Altia. I think that's how you pronounce it. But Altia is the name of this planet. This is actually a trick-taking game. So From Japan. Isn't from it? Japan, mm-hmm. yes. Well, we know they love trick-taking games. It's not so, a very Japanese name for the planet, Altia. Well, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. So planet Altia mm. is uh, in trouble. And so the king, I can't remember exactly what he's called, but it's something Altia... Artemis or something related. So the king has then uh, set off his kids, so his three sons, to find out what's the next planet that we're going to be living in. So whoever manages to do the best investigative work and, and find the best place is going to rule that new planet. And so the three princes... Princes? Is that how you say it? Prince? Prince? Princes. Yeah. 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 So it's not like princess. Prince I. <laughs> prince I. I. Yeah. How do you say princes? <laughs> Anyways. So oh, yeah. so that's why it's it's a three player game. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be the three princes, uh, trying to use trick taking as a way of gathering information as to where you're going to be like, and, and the best planet that's going to be to. And yeah, actually, it was in. quite hard to work out how this game is mechanically. There's not a lot on the Kickstarter page. I would say that our rating. You gave it a seven. I gave it a six. I I did enjoy the artwork. But yeah, it was a little bit hard for me to work it out. It gets some bonus points being a trick-taking game from Japan because Mm. they make such great trick-taking games. Um, And I thought it was really interesting towards the later second stage of the game is like an all versus... Um, it's like a two versus one element. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one versus many. That's what I was yeah. trying to say. Um, and where you're trying to outperform each other mm-hmm. in the trick taking. And so, yeah. yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And that's why it yeah. is our number seven. Altia. Altia. Our number six is a game called Chroma. Now, Chroma is very eye-catching because this game is in a triangular board and the board is really cleverly backlit. So Mm. it has a really bright, luminescent like light built into it. And then you're going to be placing kind of abstract puzzle pieces on top of that light and they're made out of perspex which means that the light shines through them and when you layer them they create different color combinations Um, now the way that this works is that at the beginning of each game you're going to be drawing a card and it gives you a name oops it gives you a name it gives you a color (laughs) so purple and then you by the end of the game want to ensure that the board is covered with as much purple um, as possible yeah so essentially it's using the like, primary colors are the the colors of the the little prospect pieces and then by combining them you're getting those secondary colors so your your oranges your greens and your your purples so it's also educational in a way if you're like learning color that theory. color theory color then it's theory. like oh that's right those two make this color and the, i so have to admit yeah. when i'm painting sometimes i'm like what two colors make this <laughs> make or what colors make your color purple. wheel then. what colors make yeah yeah i don't know I feel like I did know, know, and as I've gotten older, I've just forgotten those things. I have to relearn them. But anyway, back to Chroma. I I love this idea. I think, Mm. like, I love the game Blockus, obviously. Yes, we talk about that a lot. No. 
Like, or abstract games. Or abstract games. But you know, would... This one does look beautiful. Yeah. Like, it does... I'm curious about it. I love that the board um, lights up. I love that it's USB powered, like as in you charge it, but you don't actually have to have it plugged in the whole time. Um, apparently it'll work just fine if you're in daylight because there's going to be enough light reflecting of the white background. Mm. So yeah, I think it's a really interesting... I feel thing. like the, my only concern mm. is that I would probably, it would run out of battery and I'd never charge it again. Like, oh, I get it out of the box. So I'd be like, hey, look at my new game. Oh, I forgot to charge it. I feel because... like it would work even without the... <laughs> it would, it would. Yeah. But but part of the appeal, like a huge part of the appeal mm. of this game is that it lights up and I'd be a bit worried about that. The other issue with this game is understandably it's much more it's expensive. Quite expensive yeah, yeah very expensive i think all up it would cost us in australian dollars around 150 dollars at the base level entry mm. price to get it shipped to us which is obviously very expensive for what is a fairly simple straightforward abstract game yeah you're paying for the beautiful design for the, the light for the production value which is obviously not going to be cheap so totally understand yeah but probably for us i don't think you would enjoy it enough I, I, yeah, I agree. Like, I, it's something that I would love to try and play, but I can't really justify the cost, mm. particularly shipping into Australia and all of that. The other thing is the triangular box. I'm not sold on that. <laughs> Just because this is interesting, because I didn't think I was this sort of super, like, anal type to need to have things be, like, super neat and everything even. But then I noticed. You know how there's usually one person in on the like in your gaming group that's like tweaking the cards so that they all are on the same facing the same direction or that they're like nicely evenly parallel. Uh, that Have was you been me. Doing that? I, I yesterday I when that. we were playing, I was like, "Oh my goodness, it's me. I'm the person <laughs> around the table that's constantly doing it." So, yeah, that means I get to keep now I'm going to like are you going to pick on me out no, of alignment. Gonna... I, I feel like I don't actually mind it as much if it's just the two of us. It's mm. kind of like the thing of like, I'm happy to be messy if it's just the two of oh, us. If there's guests or there's like, sweet. if there's other people, I'm like, you don't no. care when it's just I you. I don't care. I, I have ceased to care. <laughs> Nobody, no effort in. <laughs> Welcome to almost married life, pretty much nine years. But um, yes. And so because of that, uh, I don't know what like i feel like it's going to be very visually distracting when you put it along all your other games you know yeah. when you're lining it up and then you got like this yeah thing. you'd have to have it front facing us on like unless, a display yeah unless you've got no because i was like maybe it can be the peak at the top but then they have to be facing the wall no i can't quite so I, i'm stuck in that at the moment i am i'm i'm struggling with processing the triangular box i think it's a cool idea i just don't know in practice how i would cope with it yes and also, it's a bit expensive. So also, it's very expensive. <laughs> so, so we won't be backing so it. So probably at this not stage. backing it, but I would love to play it actually. Yes. And I expect it would be one that would be really fun at a con yeah. and that type of thing. So I, I hope to see it around. Yeah. Um, that is our number six, Chroma. Our number five is a game called Arcosa. Yeah. So this is essentially a post-apocalyptic. Uh, alien world that reminds me a lot of like Fallout Shelter because you're trying to kind of build your doomsday shelter even though it's already um, been the mm -hmm. apocalypse has already been so you're going to be trying to kind of yeah make sure that you're collecting all the things and creating the best the best little shelter for all your aliens to live in and yeah cohabitate mm -hmm. there were a couple of things mechanically that kind of caught me with this one mm. um one was the way that the um events were revealed mm -hmm. and that you could kind of gamble on or, or kind of push your luck a little mm -hmm. bit with those events the other thing was that um you have cards in your hand that um, are going to give you better powers but fewer victory points or do mm. you trade them in and get uh, lower powered cards that are going to give you greater victory points and the way that interacts I think with the the bunker rooms that you mm -hmm. have in the board that you're building out I like the idea of actually building out a bunker with tiles yeah. um, and those tiles can also ha have victory points so it yeah. feels like there's just you know the type of game that we really like where mm. it is a bit of a point salad you yes. can work out multiple ways to to win yeah um, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, for me, so uh, we both gave it a seven, which is, you know, fa fairly high, actually. It's number five. Um, but the reason why it's not higher for me is probably the theme and the art are just not my style, really. I enjoy it. I don't. I didn't mind the art so mm. much. Uh, theme, I, I dig, but it's, it, for me, actually, my scoring went down a bit just because I felt like maybe it was a little bit on the light side. Mm. 
in terms. But again, this is, I feel like this is one of those games that it's not until you actually play it that you kind of get a sense for the complexities mm. and how all those things kind of actually come together yeah. um, on yeah. the table. So that's why I'm like, I'm really open and keen to play it. Mm. Um, but yeah. yeah, so we haven't backed it at this stage, but it is, it's definitely on our radar. The The shipping was quite expensive to mm. Australia. I mean, I feel like a broken record every yeah. time we say that, but it is part and parcel of why we back a game or not. So I yeah. have to talk about it, but 20 to, they gave a range of 20 to 40 US dollars to get mm. it to Australia. So that yeah that makes it a little bit more expensive so we have to be more sure of it Mm. Um, but that is our number five arcosa yeah our number four is a game called hecking hounds now in hecking hounds you are walking hades dogs so this is the god of the dead Um, you're a dog walker in hell dog walker (laughs) in hell well you're not technically you're working you're walking the dogs but if you're actually, if you're too good at it, then you're going mm. to be taken to be the permanent dog walker in hell. And you don't want that because then obviously you're going to like, that's the end of your life. You're mm-hmm. now going to be in the, in that afterlife and not particularly walking the dogs best. forever. Well, the walking dogs bit is not that bad. I think yeah, it's, there's the, a lot of dogs. Yeah, that's fine. If you're a dog lover, it's kind of like, that's a pretty sweet deal. Um, but then if you're obviously, if you're not uh, good enough then you're going to be punished by being fed to the dogs. If you're just kind of mediocre and not quite there, then you're actually, your life is spared and you get to kind of live and have more regular shifts uh, another day. Mm. I I love this. um, Actually, I really enjoyed the theme as well. I was Mm. laughing when I looked at the campaign and I really liked the artwork. The artist who has um, drawn all of the dogs and everything, she's just done an amazing job. It looks Mm. wonderful. Yeah. Um, But the, the mechanically, it's super interesting because you are actually dealt your cards and then kind of Hanabi style Mm. you are holding those cards facing outwards and so you can't see your own cards but you can see everybody else's cards but basically there's going to be one person who's the designated I'm not sure what they call it but essentially the game master of that round and what they're going to be doing is providing you with clues about your cards and then you are going to be making an assessment about how many tricks you think you can win based on um, everybody else's, else's cards and mm. making deducing I guess what yeah. is in your hand um, and then Uh, ultimately you are trying to aim for that middle range where you're Mm. not overshooting or undershooting, um, you know, and kind of landing right in the middle. And Mm. I just thought that was a fun little twist um, on the trick taking genre. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that is Hecking Hounds. Um, We are backing this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it, It seems like a game that's been put together. You know, it's like the perfect kind of game that we want to support. It's reasonably priced. Mm. Uh, It seems like it's coming from more of an indie style publisher and yeah, we're just excited about this one so that is hecking hounds our number number four four. number three our number three is a game called escape from the asylum now this game is actually not quite a game depending on your definition of game but it is uh an escape room in a box and Mm -hmm. we love escape rooms we love physical actual escape rooms when we used to be able to travel we would mm-hmm. go to a lot of escape rooms you know it's nothing like getting to a foreign city it's nothing like going to paris and locking yourself in a room mm. um <laughs> which I mean, could to be, be fair, you're trying to get out the whole time <laughs> you are trying so, to get out you know <laughs> but um yeah we have done escape rooms all over the world which is kind of just seen, a funny thing to do as a, a tourist lot of indoors yeah in exactly it's places. like you could be anywhere this yeah. is just the theme room anyway anyway um, I digress. We love escape rooms. Mm. We love the, the boxed ones. Um, sometimes we find them a little too easy, but mm. some of the harder ones we really like. This one is really interesting um, because it is like a campaign style. Yeah. There are 10 games or um, an interwoven story across 10 chapters and um, you're going to be p- puzzling out in throughout all of the chapters all contained in one box mm-hmm. um, which is really interesting the other thing I like about this is it's coming from the same team um, that brought us uh, now I forgot the name <laughs> Red Outpost thank you Red Outpost <laughs> which was the worker placement game that was kind of based on uh, communism and it was a really interesting oh, and on Mars so I, I, if, if I'm remembering Remembering correctly, so you go to Mars, um, but it's a Russian mission that goes to Mars, and so they're kind of colonizing Mars with a communist sort of spin. Yeah, but it, it was very clever. The implementation it was very clever yeah, and super yeah. interesting. Yeah. Actually, lighter than it looks. Anyway, mm. um, it was pretty well reviewed, and um, they delivered 
you know, they delivered the campaign really well. And so I'm excited to see what they're doing next. Yeah. The other thing that I really wanted to mention is that when you read through the introduction to this page, one of the first things they address is the fact that it does take place in an asylum and that um, mental health is something where, you know, back in the day it was treated very differently, but they do make a very strong trigger warning um, for anyone who, you know, has mental health issues or is going to be playing with other people and, and don't want to kind of trivial, trivialize that yep. setting. And I, I just thought that was really great to put that up front and say, mm. hey, if this is not for you, don't back it. And I, I love that they yeah. that they did that. So yeah. um, more respect for them. Um, for us, yeah, we'll 10 stories. It sounds great yeah. for us. Um, I think that... Yeah, I'm keen to go on that journey. Yeah. yeah. So we're backing it. We are backing it. There are, there are two different versions of the game. There's like the base version and then there's a deluxe version. As mm. far as I can tell from the page, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, the deluxe edition appears to only really give you like aesthetic differences mainly mm. on the box itself because mm. they can't change the game because all the puzzles are interwoven. It just seems to be like upgrades the appearance of the box. So for us, maybe we might just back it at that base yeah, level. Base yeah. Um, and, and it had a relatively good shipping price as well. So very happy to back that. That's our number three escape yeah. from the asylum. Our number two, our number two is a little game that becomes a very big game um, when it's on the table called, called Tranquility The Ascent. Now, we actually did cover this game as part of a previous small talk, um, but in Tranquility The Ascent, it's obviously a, a sequel, or but it's standalone to Tranquility, um, which was, what's the, the mechanic of it? What would you call that? It's like you're kind of, mm -hmm. well, cooperatively, yes. all working together. Um, what's that called when you no, that wasn't the bit. have it's to like, work together? It's like it, you're you're <laughs> so foreign to us. You're, you're like, trying to, so cool. what is that? No, you're tr in Tranquility, it's mm. this whole, you're trying to Kind of create the sequence of numbers yes and you don't necessarily know what everybody else has mm -hmm. and you can't communicate so that yes. whole the reason it's tranquil is because it's quiet like you're not really allowed to have any kind of conversation throughout the game um this is the next level of that it's still quiet but now instead of just having a sequence of one through two uh, I can't remember things like 80 something in tranquility in a sense, you're actually creating a mountain. So mm -hmm. you're kind of ascending up a mountain. And so each row, I'll, I'll leave you to talk about the, uh, the mechanics. No, so, that's fine. Um, so, so you're actually just building out each, each one of those rows with you know, your cards that end up having like that diamond sort of, sort of shape. But along the way, you're going to be having like little camps and you're going to be creating like building bridges that then you have to kind of make sure that you, that you uh, address, you can't leave a bridge, a, a bridge, a bridge just behind you. So it's. I, we really enjoyed this. We really like, enjoyed we played, our time yeah. with this. We actually yeah. really enjoyed their previous game, um, Tranquility, yeah. and we both decided I'll link to the video above where we did do a Kickstarter preview in Small Talk, but uh, where we talk about it a bit more. But we did enjoy this one even more than yeah. the original game. Yeah. And if you didn't get the original, this is a great time to pick it up because this one also has a couple of really interesting little expansions or variants on the game that make it even more challenging because mm -hmm. ultimately you're trying to make sure you can finish the entire mountain and put that last little summit piece on top uh, without communicating to each other and basically working together. And I don't know, we don't play co-op games, but mm. when we're not talking to each other, it seems to work just fine. <laughs> so um, I really do, I really do um, enjoy Tranquility yeah. the Ascent. We had a, yeah, a lot of fun with it. Yeah, check out the, the fuller review. Oh, actually it's on the Kickstarter page as well. Yeah. So check that out on yeah. there. Um, but that is our number two. We Maggie gave it a nine and I gave it an eight um, and that is Tranquility the Ascent. Yeah. Our number one for this back chat is Villagers Shifting, Shifting Seasons. Seasons. Another game that we covered as well as part of a small talk. Um, Shifting Seasons is an expansion to the game Villagers. We actually hadn't played Villagers before. The, we actually got to kind of have a, a play with the expansion as well. And I absolutely loved it. Like mm -hmm. I love the, the base game. Shifting season adds brings in the events. So it's well the events that the are seasons. like the seasons. Yep. Yeah. And so now it we actually 
played it wrong a bit because we were having the, the yeah seasons... in the video you'll see uh, again it's on the kickstarter page but in our preview we actually were playing with the events face down yeah and they were very kind about it and said yes, <laughs> actually I... the, the events should be face up so, so everyone you can, can plan them. ahead yeah, yeah. yeah but that's fine we had a lot of fun with our surprise events yeah and amy loves an event and she loves when like something all of a sudden happens to everybody I do. So, yeah so but that we have actually worked and we have since played it the right way and it's still yeah. equally good we really enjoyed um that part of it, it it does mean that you can plan ahead and you're not in you know this yeah. is, the event is not all of a sudden it's like surprise you should have been doing this and you're like oh no i backed the wrong horse or i did the right um they're not kind of uh awful events they're usually really fun kind of mm. things it brings in also new um, um professions you've got clay so which yes. was really cool because we just recently got into pottery so it's like yes. yay pottery we can be i can be a potter yeah. and no matter my strategy i'm like i just want to be the potter every and time. i just take <laughs> i just take those cards um, yeah i really love that new uh, it's meant to be actually be for a higher play account, but they do include rules of how to work it in because there are a lot of people that are going to want to play with it. I also love that they have kind of variations of how to make the game a little bit longer, which I enjoyed because mm-hmm. often I found like, I, I, I love the game and I don't want it to just end. I want to feel like I'm building up and doing mm-hmm. a little bit more. It includes a new solo mode, um, which, uh, yeah, the monastery mode. So it's you're not playing against somebody like an AI. You're really, the, the, there is technically kind of like an AI, but it's minimal um, interaction. It's mainly just um, you kind of optimizing your your flow of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it includes some other things, some additional villages, special villages. Yes. And, you know, as we said in our little preview, um, more is more in this game. So they're <laughs> always welcome. It's always good to have the o- options, The yeah. only thing I like was less excited about is like the you know the harvest pet the the new the teams the teams the okay. teams yeah so with the teams though yeah well, why were you less excited about them i just feel like i didn't need them necessarily like i was quite happy doing i would things. agree mm. when we were playing multiplayer i did find myself using them when i was ah, playing solo interesting yes one because that's when i kind of was like oh actually this would be really handy for me to have um they're yeah, they're essentially going to give you, there are another way of getting your builder um, actions. So the little uh, houses for the mm. build actions and your little harvest, your food. Um, yeah. Icon. And I understand why they did it because obviously it's going to balance out the luck of the draw in terms of how often those symbols come up and, and how you, everyone can kind of mm. draft those things. So it, it makes total mechanical sense why they did it. For me, I just felt like I didn't need to use it, maybe mm. just in the games that we played with it. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. that, it, you know, it's a welcome addition. We will never not play with any of these expansions. Yeah. It'll They'll just all get folded in and they will yeah. all be used every time we play. Um, yeah, I... And it's a backed. It's yeah, a backed for it's us. It's definitely yeah. a backed for us. Um, I really... You know, things that stood out to me about the campaign as well is the custom card sleeves. You don't often see that. And I thought that was I thought that was really cool. Yes, I know that's transparent normally. Because well, she was like, oh, you know, they're really cool because they've got the, the symbol. And I was like, but if you're transparent, you could just see I know, the symbol. I know, I know, they're I get custom it. and I they're know, fun. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, normally I would probably go in on those as well. Um, but because, yeah, look, we are notionally back in this. We obviously have a prototype of the it's game. It's a prototype, yeah. yeah so but we'll there's be... new developments that I actually haven't been able to, to yes. like play with. So. Yes, the new developments. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, we will give this a backstamp. It is okay. our number one. We both gave it nine. It just seems like one of those expansions that fits seamlessly into the game. Mm. Um, our number one, yeah. Villagers Shifting Seasons. Um, so that is everything yeah. for this fortnight. That is our top 10 that we're most excited about. I would say this, you know, there wasn't as many to review or to look over as many campaigns. There was only 20 or so that we looked mm. at. Um, they will all be linked below in the description. Um, if you do enjoy the series, please, um, you know, we'll ask you every week to please hit the like um, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will be back with more big box board game reviews Mm. very very soon hopefully this week if maggie gets time to do some editing we'll see but otherwise (laughs) bye for now bye